Saturday, 29th September. Kind of a quiet day. Lots of blue skies, nice visibility uh, across the valley. A few thunderheads popping up here and there. They, they kind of come up and then they end up being sheared off and end up being into that. Over the mountains, they've had a little more help. Finally getting a little bit of a rain shaft showing up uh, just about three miles to the southeast. Uh, but then as soon as that's happened, the plains have begun. No trails, no trails, just plains. And then I, and I'm interested in this kind of stuff. It starts to uh, come off the, the cumulonimbus, this stuff. And this did not begin until the plains started. And you know how I feel about clouds that there's thunder. The dirt exhibiting this behavior versus this more robust cauliflower. It's like they're, they're just not going to be able to develop as they would otherwise. And uh, that's about it. I was hoping this little trek out to the road and I'd catch a plane, but that doesn't seem to be the case. All right, everybody, need to back out. It's a little leftover moisture and we're still in this uh, in this baggy trough that's still residing over the central Rockies. That's just enough with the, uh, the instability of the afternoon heating to get these puppies going. Alright, that's it for now. Had a few planes uh, lately. A bit after 5 o'clock. As you see on the time lapse, we've had a nice little thunderhead kind of go up stationary. Um, it was a little intense for a while, and uh, it sure looked like it was going to be hail up top. And as the clouds and the rain shafts have pulled away, um, they've certainly whitened up. So that's indeed what it was with hail and a little, maybe a little snow, but it was certainly heavier farther back. And now the storm pulls away. Thunder has ceased. We'll see if there's uh, many more planes showing up. Or certainly in the cool outflow from that. Um, still sun in place. But uh, the time lapse should be kind of cool. The time lapse will be kind of cool. Alright, that's it from the ground. So there's probably still a little more rain coming, but this uh, initial thunder showers and now headed off to the east and we get a beautiful rainbow and we'll get some sun under this and illuminate these uh, pseudomomatous type things. But uh, long shadows this time of day. But uh, there's our sunlight and there's still a shower. This guy's still building a little sunset on the west. shade in here we can uh, see the raindrops falling in the light but uh, yeah there's our sunset the rainbow some rain and hail up on the mountains Ooh, it's chilly Look it up, guys. Keep looking up. Just an unreal amount of chemtrails off the coast of Oregon today. It um, doesn't appear to be uh, zigzag. Uh, just an incredible amount of chemtrails off the coast of Oregon today. Um, you can see there's just structure, they're right in through here. Look at this, boom, boom. So there's something with this storm uh, that they are, that they're playing with. We go to the uh, imagery, the, the, the upper air analysis, 
it's right in through here and there's just it's subtle it's subtle it's a very subtle field that they're playing with um, we're, we're dealing in southern Colorado with just uh, just some some ripples rolling along and some residual moisture but um, what, whatever they're doing here has to be with amplifying this high pressure because it's a fairly flat one it's off into here this morning uh, and as we get in towards tomorrow's forecast for the morning of Sunday the 30th, we can see this high grows. It amplifies. And then it becomes a rather major weather player in splitting the jet stream, keeping a low pressure system off the coast of California. And then as this high builds, then what happens is downstream, this trough amplifies. Let's go back 48 hours. You can see it's a, a, an amorphous, very weak low uh, as, we, as we begin Saturday the 29th. By Sunday, it begins to amplify a little bit and slowly migrates uh, from, uh, from uh, western Arkansas or Oklahoma to middle eastern Oklahoma. And then by Monday morning, it's into Arkansas, but it is stronger. And so maybe that's what all the camp trailing off the coast of Oregon was for today, was to amplify this high and to give the downstream momentum to to dig out this trough that is going to become a fairly significant weather maker across the southeastern states uh, in, in some days time. We continue with another storm that rolls in off the North Pacific with that high still in place off the coast of, uh, of the Pacific Northwest and this is a, is a season changer. We said that before but this one is even more amplified and it digs stronger so we're going to be, begin to see some frosts in some of this uh, upper portion of, uh, of North Dakota and certainly through the Canadian prairies as that our high begins to migrate farther off the coast of Oregon and remains so. And then even as we are we're at 144 hours, um, this low still migrates or sits off of the coast of California. Meanwhile, general troughiness begins to bring fallish conditions through the heart of the nation. And uh, I kind of want to go back and this was uh, late afternoon across the Plain States. We've got Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, and Missouri. And you can see the trails in the lines through the clouds. So at some point, the clouds get thick enough that from below you can't see the abundance of trails. Look at that. That is crazy. Crazy. The geometry that's in there. So this cloud shield, this chemtrail cloud shield across the Sunflower State today was unreal. And then it continues through Oklahoma as all of these events have the impact of man profoundly, profoundly on them. I'm going to slide this over just a touch because this hole has my attention. You can see that hole within the clouds kind of squirting out of it. Uh -huh. And... Uh, the trails thick as we move through uh, Georgia, outside of Atlanta, south of Atlanta. Look at that. I mean, that's just unmistakable. And so when you watch your local weatherman, you, you, the graphics they're showing you are just cartoons. There's so little science in them. Look at the trails across the highlands uh, in South Carolina. And we've got a pair of holes right here. So it's just the detail that is lost is, is unreal. And so what I'm seeing is that so much of the nation today was impacted by, by these chemtrails. Probably every state was dealing with them. And then I'm going to pop off the west coast here in the wide view. And I showed this in an earlier frame, but this is just too crazy to, to not see twice. And you can see with the ocean in the background, um, the numerous, numerous trails across the coastal areas through Oregon, and it just is, uh, it's thick. So whatever they're doing is worthy of spending hundreds of millions of dollars on. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Because this, this project daily um, involves every bit of, of 2,000 airplanes. What we're seeing here on in the North American continent, what is now down in South America, and then what is also happening in Europe. It's, it's, it's unreal. It's just unreal the expense that they're willing to go to to, to play this game out. Pop down to Texas because I'm seeing some holes down here. Let's zoom in. And you kind of see them. It really depends on, on the scale that you want to look at. And once we begin to animate things, um, there's a pair 
here in the in the other end of the San Luis Valley where I am. At this time, I was about right into here, and then the thunderheads moved move south, and that did uh, that did get us soaked. We got about a quarter of an inch worth of rain, so that was good. Some good stuff. So we're gonna wind this down. Uh, I just want to say thanks for watching and uh, share with your friends and family. And uh, I love to get on the ground pictures on the ground, on the ground in Oregon today would have been amazing. Yesterday it was Central Canada, today it's Oregon, and it all seems to be doing with engineering high pressure centers, at least with these kind of chemtrails. All right, everybody, keep looking up.